What's up, everyone? Welcome to the Christian Mystic Podcast. I have with me today Psy Cosmos, and we're going to be talking about the sacred secretion. There's been a lot of uh, comments uh, regarding the sacred secretion, wondering uh, what specific time of month uh, you're supposed to look to, uh, what all the alkaline diet entails, um, many, many different questions, and we're just going to try to cover them uh, all mostly in this video. And if we can't get to these questions in this video, I will be having Mr. Psy Cosmos back again so we can go over these questions uh how's it going man everything's going great my name is matt i'm uh, one of the co-founding members of team psychosmos we started this project probably roughly five years ago uh a lot of it was having to do with uh this mass awakening that we're feeling we kind of got a little bit of that energy a bit early i had a really deep uh, dmt experience like eight or so years ago which kind of led me down this path and uh, i don't condone doing you know psychedelics or anything for anybody who's not ready i've only done dmt once and and only that one time because it was a complete accident i didn't even know what i was doing at the time i was in college i was a stupid kid just kind of screwing around and uh, i ended up having one of the most transcendental if not the most transcendental experience of my life where i learned about the sacred secretion and then i went into the real world and discovered that it was a real thing um, and so ultimately what i tell everybody is the sacred secretion uh, is not only a biological process that is within each and every person's body regardless of who or who you are or where you come from or uh, you know, I get questions all the time about what about my diet? What about if I don't have specific organs? It doesn't matter. This process goes uh, within the body um, roughly once every month or lunar cycle. But that's just the very basics of it. There are people who train their bodies and incorporate these lifestyles and habits uh, who are able to maximize their potential. But essentially, most of the major world religions are uh, followers of this teaching, whether they know it or not. This includes the Judeo-Christian faiths. Sacred secretion is within the Kabbalah. It's within the Zohar. It's within the Holy Bible. It's within the New Testament. It's within the Bhagavad Gita uh, of the Hindus. Um, it's within the Popolva of the Mesoamericans and the South Americans. It, it's basically the Greco-Romans talk about it very extensively. The Egyptians talk about it very extensively um, in the Book of the Dead. There's a lot of different philo philosophical and spiritual lines of thinking that uh, have actually encapsulated this wisdom. But unfortunately, because of many different factors, wars, religious uh, zealots and organizations, money, greed, um, you know, industries that are geared towards uh, harming people with the um, with the intention of healing people or the 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 neglectful intention of healing people uh, all there's basically you know a big conspiracy if you want to think of it that way towards this one process and the reason for that is because everyone can take advantage of it it, it restores power uh, to your soul it restores um, it heals your body it reactivates dormant brain cells it does a whole wide variety of things but mainly what it does uh, you know forgetting all the religious stuff forgetting everything else it heals that's really the ultimate goal of the sacred secretion in a very practical sense anybody can take advantage of it it doesn't matter what spiritual faith you are in um, whether it's the uh, baptism or the transubstantiation of the Christian or Catholics, or it's the Kundalini of the Hindus, it doesn't matter. There are plenty of uh, different cultures and different philosophical ways of thinking. And now due to the scientific community, not really knowing too much about this process, they have inadvertently proven that this process is in fact true within the human body. So basically my short little elevator 
pitch here is that the sacred secretion is something that everybody should be taking advantage of as best as they possibly can, because it is living in perfect tandem with nature's cycles. And if you live in perfect tandem with nature's cycles, you can heal and reduce harm to your body, your spirit, and your soul and your mind as well. But that's all part and parcel. So it, it, essentially what I'm saying is the sacred secretion is a practice that, um, you know, again, ignoring a lot of the religious uh, verbiage that we're going to use today, it's really just a method of self self healing feeling, discovering God, discovering the universe for yourself, however you want to see it that way in a very practical sense. For yep. Sure. I mean, we're basically dealing with like, like we I've said before on our phone call that we're dealing with the cure for cancer here. Like this yep. is the cure for anything. Yep. So just a little bit for the Judeo, Judeo Christian viewers that are going to be on my channel um, <clears throat> to understand the context of this, because there is, um, there is more context when it comes to the, uh, like allegory and the exodus out of Egypt, but just to cover um, the main parts, I believe it's Acts ten eighteen. If I'm not mistaken, mm, there's plenty of them. Um, even in uh, yeah, there. Um, I think what is it? Uh, um, there. When yeah, there's where um. He says that uh, the man of God does not sin, for his seed resideth within him. Yep. Uh, it may not be Acts, actually. It may be Romans 10. Yeah, it's Romans 10. 18. It's Romans. That's correct. Yeah. Yeah, Romans 10, 18. And it says um, this is in context with, uh, you know, where Israel's rejected the prophets. And it says, um, verily, verily, have they not heard their sound went into all the earth and their worlds, uh, words unto the ends of the world. Now that's quoting directly from Psalms 19. And mm -hmm. that's probably one of the most interesting verses um, or chapters or Bible studies that you could probably go to in the Bible, uh, the Hebrew Bible, the English Bible, whichever um, you choose, because it's, it's really quite there in all of the different translations. That's correct. And, and not to mention, it's also in Genesis when Jacob is wrestling, um, you know, with this deity, which in deep esoteric circles, a lot of people believe is Metatron, which represents uh, the epitome of the androgynous combination of the divine masculine and divine like feminine. Such an awesome video coming out on Metatron regarding how Metatron is Yeshua. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that is correct. That is correct. Um, not to mention that in the in the Bible, it says that Jesus is in the order of Melchizedek and Melchizedek and Metatron are very, very similar in a lot of their properties. But um, in Genesis at, uh, 29 through 32, 33, I, I, I'm just kind of spitballing off the top of my head. There's this uh, entire story where Jacob is wrestling with this angel. He feels a whole bunch of tension in his hips. There's a very specific uh, important point to that because that has to deal with the sacrum. The sacrum is very crucial to the sacred secretion process. The sacrum is the lowest bone of the of the spine. Mm -hmm. and, yep, sword in the stone, the holy grail. Exactly. It's it's also the sword and shield because it looks like a shield with a sword in it. There's a there's a whole wide variety. The philosopher's stone, you know, etc. And and really, it's just the combination of the entire spine, including the brain. But um, he you know he looks upon the face of God and he calls it Mount Peniel, and that's the pineal gland. And uh, the the numerology behind those specific uh, um uh numbers uh in in genesis they they're very important so all of this is just uh kind of playing into this concept of the sacred secretion which is the the really it's christ within you right it's the consciousness the christ within you everything if you believe in a lot of these esoteric circles if you understand the deeper mysteries you understand that as above so below right um so this is kind of reflected in a lot of different ways but uh one of the one of the better ways um that it kind of plays a part in our bodies is that the uh, the so below aspect of jesus christ is within all of us um there are if you actually transliterate the hebrew in the old testament you'll find that moses moshe he he had jesus within him if you actually translation it'll actually show that um moses had jesus residing within himself in order for him to do the ten commandments and everything as part of this um process and uh yeah, I, I know it was like a little glitchy there. Um, it's can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, okay, I, I can hear you. Cool. Okay. Um, so yeah, it's super crucial that Jesus is actually in, within you because this whole entire concept of Christ consciousness is really taking off right now. Yeah, and the microcosm of the macrocosm. Exactly. So the the microcosmic aspect of this uh, is actually 
it, there, there's a whole bunch of different scientific jargon that I could use, but it's basically uh, light enriched plasma. So there's plasma within our human body. And it, as long as you're taking care of yourself, it'll actually enrich itself with light vibration a bunch of metaphysical properties and then those metaphysical properties will combine with a bunch of the, this is like the, the again transubstantiation the catholic church calls it that but if you go for that latin that Eng english romanized word and then you go for the, like the greek translation of the word transubstantiation this of course being where you in the catholic church they take the uh the bread and the wine so this is actually an external uh, validation of what happens within and transubstantiation in Greek is actually mitosis. This is where we get the word um, for transubstantiation in the Catholic Church. So the entire properties of what they're talking the splitting of cells is how cells heal. And the sacred secretion process is actually a greater mitosis process. So the sacred secretion itself, this mitosis uh, process, how God oh, you good? All right. Yeah, I think so. That was weird. It just crashed and then started recording the second it came back up. So hopefully it's all good. It's all good. We'll just keep rolling with it. Well, what I can do too is I can edit this video and and then I'll send you the edited copy because I was going to do that anyway. So it's all good. Um, but anyway, what I was saying was, yeah, the transubstantiation, this this Catholic word, um, and there's a bunch of different other pro, uh, uh, different acts, right? That um, a, a lot of people do in different cultures that kind of represent this. But I'm going for the 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 Judeo Christian Catholic terminology because we're really talking about jesus christ the internal jesus christ um but even if you want to go to the hindus there's also kundalini kundalini is huge as we well can go back real quick to um where I, where I was talking about the gospel of the kingdom yeah um, where that's in psalms 19 and romans 10 18 that's talking that's talking about the gospel of the kingdom that casts out sick or casts out demons and heals the sick if you read any of those verses in context they'll usually be like a little um uh, I forget what it's what the actual word is, but it's like a little letter or something beside it, and you can go down and find it in the footnotes. Now, if you go to the footnotes, it'll take you right to Romans ten eighteen and right to Psalms nineteen. Mm -hmm. uh, Psalms nineteen says, "For the heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth His handiwork. Day unto day uttereth speech, and night unto night showeth knowledge. There is no speech nor language, for their voice is not heard." This is, you know, it's like the Tower of Babel. There was a unified theory of knowledge at one point in time. Um, and then it says, their line, which is the analemma, is gone out throughout all the earth and their words to the end of the world. In them hath he set a tabernacle or a house for the sun. Mm. The sun. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, which is as a bridegroom, like Yeshua's a bridegroom, coming out of his chamber and rejoices, uh, rejoiceth as a strong man to run a race. His going forth is from the end of the heaven and his circuit unto the ends of it. And that circuits the analemma, mm. and there is nothing hid from the heat thereof. That's talking. If, if you keep going, it even says, uh, "Much more to uh, are they to be desired are than are they than gold." Mm. You know, gold is another alchemical symbol for the sun. It's a symbol for turning lead into gold. Right. Yeah. Right. And you're talking about the analemma, which is really this figure eight pattern that the sun makes in the sky in the in the scientific or the astrological realm. But really, we have the analemma within us because it's yeah, it, yeah the sun is basically representative of where your energy lies within your body. Yeah. And the truth of the matter is everybody wants to have a one stop shop. They want to say, oh, well, if I go full vegan, I'm going to heal. Or if I if I just meditate and do yoga, I'm going to heal. You have to master every aspect of everything in your life. Life, just as the way that God represents everything in, in all aspects of your life, if you really want to uh, kind of push onward and and have that connection with God or with the universe, right? So this includes um, mental men mentality, uh, emotions, phys the physical aspect of life. People want to basically pick and choose. They want to neglect certain parts, but it doesn't work that way, right? Ultimately, uh, what the sacred secretion entails is mastering every single aspect of yourself that you possibly possibly can't so this includes like anything that you want or need like desires or something emotions um the, your
your mentality, your physical, uh, your spirit, your soul, things, things of that nature. And all of these kind of come into, into, um, you, you building them. It's like a video game, right? You have like all your little stats and this is the matrix. So we really are in a video game. Well, the sacred secretion is a practice that is very individualized for each person. This is something that gets people really kind of confused because they really want to master when this process is. But when you're first starting, the easiest way to just say this is, um, you have to track where the moon is going. There's a lot of reasons for that. The main one being that uh, the moon is a more feminine aspect and the sun is a more masculine aspect. You need both light from the sun and the moon to kind of heal, right? This is actually why the two biggest killers in the whole world are heart disease, which is ruled by Leo the sun uh, or, or the heart and cancer, which is literally named cancer, the disease, but can there's also cancer, the, the zodiacal sign where your, your cells smother each other. And then you fester and you die that way. You need to master both the, the light and dark aspects of your life in tandem. And you have to walk the middle path, just like Jesus did. This is again, why those two big killers are related to, uh, the, the, uh, Leo and cancer, which represent the sun and the moon. So if you're not living in tandem with the cycles of nature, then basically you just don't live, live very long and you die. Now, a lot of people naturally do these processes by default. They do it automatically. They don't even realize that they do it. They've probably been doing it their whole lives. Hell, some of them are going to be doing it right now while they're watching this video. However, there are things that people do, matrix material level BS crap that people do that can actually harm this process during each cycle of the lunar cycles, which is a month or a month. This is why months are named that way after the, after the moon. So ultimately, the big thing is that uh, as long as you're taking care of yourself, you're eating properly, uh, you want to have an alkaline diet, that means that you want to avoid acidic foods. And you can Google all that because I, I don't need to go off on a, la a laundry list of, for that. But you want to have an alkaline diet during the, this period of time where the moon, which is the maternal aspect, the holy mother, which is more of an invisible force, whereas the sun represents the more paternal aspect, the godly force, uh, the, a very masculine aspect. It's very very direct. The moon it controls the tides. It controls the waters within our bodies, just like it controls the, the waters all over the, the earth. So uh, it does not, it's not a crazy estimation to assume that the moon does control us. And it does. In fact, cops and, and police officers will tell you they have more crime on a full moon than any other time because blood is flowing, people are agitated, whatever. Um, and it doesn't matter what full moon it is or what month, because it's just, it, these are just the cycles of life, right? So ultimately to wrap up, what I'm saying here, you have to track when the moon enters the sign of your birth. So if you know yourself, basic astrology, like, oh, I was born in uh, January, because it's January right now. Oh, I was born in January. I'm a Capricorn. So that means when the moon enters Capricorn, this is basically going to be happening for you at those times. There are more advanced things that come along. I've been doing this for five years. And I can tell you after a certain point, um, your body can master doing this basically whenever you want to, but it's very strong still when the moon enters your sun sign, that's the best time to do it. Um, but you want to avoid things like orgasming, um, eating bad acidic foods, destroying this plasma that is being created within your body, destroying this energy. You want to avoid bad emotions. You want to meditate, do yoga. You want to do practices that are good and healthy for you. You want to exercise. You want to be with family and friends and don't be around people who are going to be like, hey, let's go out to the bars. You, you, you don't want to do that. Ironically, you might find yourself in situations like that, but either way, you want to stay true to yourself, stay true to God. And that's basically a very small little uh, semi-detailed explanation of how to activate this process. And a lot of it is just energy manipulation, which is very tough for a lot of people, but we'll get in, we can get into more advanced tips the more that we have conversations too. Right. And it, yeah. it's, it's very interpersonal. Like it is a relationship. <clears throat> it, it's your own, your own um, relationship with God. You know, it's not, it's not, Oh, what Tom Dick or Harry's doing down the road with his relationship. It's, it's about internal focusing, you know, that's right so you can't internal focus if you're always outward focused i think i think that's the whole purpose of the um the bible verse when he's like you know if there's a plank in somebody's eye or in your own eye don't worry about the speck in somebody else's you know it's it's very simple um but yeah just to touch on the sacred secretion um at at, at the beginning the, the the base science of it i suppose um the oil is called the ovum oil in science is like a, a everyday science 
Um, but it is a oil that descends from the colostrum in your brain. It starts from since you were born and begins to trip down the spine around puberty. Yep. Um, as it goes down the spine, it collects at the five fused bones at the bottom of the spine known as the coccyx or the sacrum. This is where, you know, the stone of scone is. And it's also where, where it was symbolic when God touched Jacob in Genesis. So um, the sacred secretion trips down your spine. And then from there, it, the vibration of the cerebral spinal fluid is affected, you know, by the moon and like, just like the tides because it's fluid, just like water. OK, so once a month, every month, 12 times a year, the, the vibration of the cerebral spinal fluid increases enough to form a seed around the solar plexus or the house of bread, Bethlehem. Mm -hmm. If your body is in an alkaline state, you've remained pure for a week or more. And yep. um, at least before this process begins. Exactly. And yeah, and you haven't consumed alcohol. You haven't been super depressed, um, not been super angry or agitated or aggressive, or right. you just got back from fight club or something, you know, you can't, you can't be doing that. It's, it's, mm. uh, but if you allow that seed to form and those protective layers around the seed are not burst, it will actually raise itself. This is not something that, we're talking about that can be formed by extra means. It's a it's a process that's always naturally occurring, but you either kill the seed or you raise it. That's right. And a lot of people inadvertently, they kill the seed. They don't even realize it. And actually, from my experience, you know, I've probably taught more than 200 people sacred secretion in my personal life as in like i've gone to expos events i've i've been doing this for quite some time and i've taught people these uh these truths and what i find is that it doesn't matter what gender people people seem to gravitate towards these very matrix and low vibrational uh things during those periods of time where the moon does enter their sign i love everything that you said because essentially what happens here is your body uh, if anybody's confused on on what he just said your body body basically during this process of the month where the moon is shining down this specific vibrational frequency of light, which your body is acclimated to. Um, when that happens, your body converts this light into matter. And your pro the, the, the point of this process is to then convert the matter back into light to send back to source that connects you to God. So basically this light hits the claustrum, the Santa Claus part of the brain, the claustrum is like this bit. It's like, it's like a little satellite in your brain. It's always looking and picking up on uh, energy that's all around you. And it takes this energy. It, it adapts it. It tells the pineal and pituitary and a whole bunch of other parts of the endocrine system to start releasing specific chemicals. Um, those chemicals then travel down, as you said, the, the, the base of the spine specifically, it's the back part of the pituitary gland because um, pineal is like pine cone. It's, it's supposed to be um, it, it, and there's a lot of other things that, that are about the pineal gland, but basically it's supposed to be this spiral. Uh, it, it's a spiral and uh, the spiral is super important because that's like DNA. It's like our body, Fibonacci. it's like like yeah exactly fibonacci. um fibonacci so the pineal is super important but the pituitary is also important but what a lot of people don't know is that the pituitary gland is actually two glands so this is the trinity within the brain this is the father the son and the holy spirit the son and the holy spirit the son and the mother just like how in our in our galactic sky we have the solar sun uh, which is called a sun for a reason because the star sirius in cancer isis is the holy mother uh they're in a binary star system actually it could potentially be a trinary star system and more than likely is but I haven't figured out what that third star is yet. Um, so if you know, drop a comment. Um, but anyway, the binary star system that we have uh, as above is also within us. Uh, please don't lose connection. Come on. Aspect. This, this is what, this is what, uh, this is what rules love. You know, this is what rules those emotions that you can't see. And science is never going to be able to pinpoint quantum physics type shit. Um, but <laughs> Uh, this back pituitary part is what releases things like somatostasin, soma, like the Christ. Somatostasin is super, super imperative to this process. It, it is like an anti-aging chemical, and it also is super good for this entire sacred secretion process because this is where things transform. All of these chemicals kind of travel down the spine and the spleen, the liver, uh, the pancreas, the adrenal glands on the kidneys, the kidneys themselves, and the genitals mainly 
um, are all creating different in the digestive tract even uh, creates some soma as well. The lungs create DMT, all of these different processes, uh, all these different chemicals essentially are filtering your body, cleaning your body at this time. A lot, a lot of people feel really lethargic. They might feel really low. They might feel really depressive. They might feel really angry, horny, hungry, whatever. I've heard it all. Th there's a very powerful energy once a month where this hits people and they want to do bad things, um, but they really shouldn't. They should actually be doing the the opposite they should be trying to uplift themselves because as you said as all of these chemicals are trying are basically traveling towards your center point of gravity which is that virgo house of bread and and keep in mind virgo is an m and Scor scorpio is also an m because both of these both of those signs are ruled by it's the 13th element m is the 13th virgo. letter in the english alphabet and ma is like you know mm, uh, mother marine all of these things represent the feminine aspects of creation. So. Yeah, it's kind of glitching out. Can you still hear me? Oh, man. As a physical thing, uh, this is this also plays in part with like Gnosticism, right? Because Gnosticism talks about Sophia. But putting that aside, uh, Virgo is super important because Virgo is basically the sign which represents meteors and asteroids. Now, if if you all remember, there's an asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter. There's a secret hidden within that asteroid belt. That that asteroid belt in the as above represents jesus christ because it was born of the virgin mary and it died it sacrificed itself so that all of the magnetism of all the other planets could envelop and could work in tandem so that we could even exist so virgo and scorpio scorpio of course this that one's a little bit easier that one has a secret because it's sexual um and this is where like this the sexual alchemy of everything comes into play those two elements hold very key secrets and not a lot of people know that but anyway so all of these uh fluids travel eventually make it to the base of the spine this uh the spleen which is actually one of the more important organs it's a very feminine organ the spleen actually assists in creating a whole wide variety of this plasma that is necessary to encapsulate this light energy so in order for it to basically uh germinate and create that christ seed so so the spleen is like the manger and if you look into the etymology of the spleen it actually ties back to things that mean things like manger or uh house of bread or even even like house of fish which we know jesus was the fish so uh anyway well, this also goes back to your body being the temple of the holy spirit A exactly your t your body is the temple of the holy exactly. spirit Yes, exactly. Because the Holy Spirit is that invisible element and your whole purpose is to adopt and embrace those invisible aspects of light because that's where God's light shines. The 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 brightest is in the darkness where things don't make a lot of sense. And um, so anyway, all these chemicals travel to the base of the spine, the base of the spine. If you are if you are chaste during this time if you if you uh, are celibate during this time period now there's there's some things that you should also know when it comes to the sex um you can actually still have sex but you can't orgasm and it's actually very good for you if you have a partner who's okay with having sex but everybody ties sex and orgasms together they're not the same thing you if you have the sexual uh um you know act without orgasm and then you what you're doing is basically having a piston charge full of blood yeah, I see it says remaining time. You have a piston charging full of blood in both of the genital regions. And this is what the Kama Sutra and a whole bunch of other books talk about. But if you charge that blood energetically and sexually, and then you bring up all of those secretions and fluids, the testicles and the ovaries both are linked directly into the base of the spine through the iliac arteries and through the testicular and ovarian arteries and I will nerves. Say though, and for the first little bit of time and the sacred secretion, uh, about the first three days before the, the moon actually goes into your sign, you're not supposed to have any kind of sexual stimulus whatsoever. yes that is true yeah. that is true well there, well, there also yeah. is you know because i want to touch before the time runs out mm -hmm. um i do want to touch on you can technically still have an orgasm while practicing the sacred secretion there are ways um but the the only real accepted way is found within white tantra and this is right. orgasm without ejaculation it's exactly not, you can't expel the seed you send it up the spine instead
Right. And that, that's exactly right. I'm very glad that you touched on that. It, what we do when we talk about these things, we have to make it very basic because the very advanced stuff is hard for people to kind of adapt to. But what you yes. said is exactly right. You want to, for most of the preparation period, I always give it a very good amount of time, like five days. Um, uh, I uh, there No sexual stimulation. However, um, during the process where you're trying to activate and raise this, there it that's okay to have sexual stimulation to some extent. But you have to keep God as your highest intention and not the sex itself. If you're just going to have sex because you're horny, then forget it. Don't do it. But if you want to connect with your partner and you want to have that, as long as you're not spilling the cup of Hermes, you're not spilling the seed, um, that's okay to some degree. But I wouldn't I wouldn't even bother tampering with that until you're advanced because it's very wow. difficult to do. Um, I would just not have any sexual stimulation at all whatsoever during these times when you're, when you're beginning. But anyway, um, what you're doing is, as you said, if the whole part purpose is to activate the brain and to raise your vibrational frequency so that the brain acts as as a magnet to pull this seed up back to heaven and heaven is of course in your mind so you you're pulling the seed up and so you're avoiding those lower chakras lower energies um during that time period of the month and then your the seed will automatically come up into the brain the hardest part for it to cross is in the neck and and there's actually a whole esoteric understanding of why that is but anyway um Mm. Yeah. yeah. So, so this is actually, even in Kabbalah, this is where Da'at is the hidden 11th Sephiroth. So, so right here, there's like these big crisscross shapes, like crucifixion. It's like a big X in, in your neck. And what you need isn't, to do is the uh, constellation of the um, it's, I believe it's the Southern crux. It's also found in the neck area. Yeah, I think so. And so, it, it might, it might be below Taurus. I think, I think you might be correct. Yeah. yeah. I, 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 I would have to re relook at that, but yeah, you might be right. Um, but either way, yeah, there's this big X, um, these X shaped nerves that are all, that all run within the neck. And that's actually the hardest part because this, this is where you have to fully activate your brain to bring it up, um, through the optic thalamus and all the, all those parts. Basically once this secret after all of your activations and you're doing the right thing gets into the inner thalamus of the brain um this chemical combination almost like in a very strange way it like cooks it's this this really is like the bread and wine it doesn't like cook in the way you're thinking it basically forms this kind of like this uh this this plasmic based yeasty structure that pushes from the inside of the brain and causes a massive flex of the brain which stimulates the brain at reactivates storing brain cells and shoots energy out back to source so what you're doing and again people do this inadvertently all the time but what you're doing is you're actually like delivering your spirit back to source and then it's and then it comes back into you uh during different parts of the month and it's just a never-ending cycle and it's really just all living in balance with the energies and the cycle of the body that's essentially what we're getting at here this is a very super oh man don't let me lose him i only got five minutes left Basically, this is like a beginner's introduction kind of to, to the sacred secretion process, but it is a very holy practice. There's nothing negative about it. Um, and, uh, you know, if people, pe the, the one big thing I hear all the time is basically don't worship astrology and don't look at planets. I don't worship astrology. Uh, planetary objects and zodiacal signs are there for a, a, as a science and a math. The three wise men use the stars to find Jesus Christ when he was born. Right. I don't Maseroth, know what to say. The Maseroth or the Zodiac is mentioned all throughout Job and the yep. Old Testament. Uh, it's the 12 followers. Yeah, it's yeah, the 12 followers, the 12 tribes. Yeah, mm -hmm. so there's, there's nothing inherently evil about no. astrology. The stars don't worship it. For, yeah, it was used for signs and seasons and dates and appointments. And it was said right. even in Genesis, you know. But it, yep. there is a difference between knowing the signs and worshiping them, you know, knowing how to read um, the stars versus uh, bowing to the stars. Exactly. Exactly. Because bowing to the stars is why Jesus came in the first place, because that's what he talks about to the Jews. He, he calls them synagogue, saying all that other stuff, because they basically I mean, it's really misintranslated these days. But basically, they were worshiping the stars and the planetary objects and idols and things like that, um, which at the time was like a very common known. Right. And that's a very common thing that they did back then. And Jesus came and said, no, dude, there's something way bigger than that. You guys have to look outside of yourself. You have to know what love is and God is and all that other stuff. And they killed him for it. But that's, uh, again, he, the reason that he is the son of God is because this 
this is actually where we get the word Mashiach, the Messiah. It comes from a Hebrew word meaning Mashiach, which means oil or anointment. That's actually what the Zohar states the whole purpose of the Kabbalah is. The Kabbalah being like the tree of life or the pathway of, to God. Um, the, I really hope I don't lose connection. Come on, computer. <laughs> That's what we're getting at here. It's 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 a it's a process on how to uh, connect with source. It's a process to connect with God and heal yourself as well. Um, I hope it hasn't cut too much of you out of the video. I've kept, I've continued to lose. Uh, no, I'm I'm actually recording on my end. So like okay. I said, I'll, I'm just going to edit it and I'll send you the 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 edited video. For sure, for sure. Cool. All right, bet. Yeah, yeah. So but anyway, yeah, that's my that's my little crash course on sacred secretion. Crash course. I like how to. Uh, I'll actually probably title this the crash course of the sacred secretion with Psycosmos. So, Love that. Yeah, let's do sure. it. Let's do it. Awesome. It was awesome having you on. Really quick, I want to, because uh, we got three minutes left, I want to kind of talk about um, the female um, sacred secretion cycle because I've heard so much about the male probably for, I mean, you know, almost half a decade now, but I haven't really heard anyone touch on the female part of the sacred secretion. Thank you for bringing that up. And I'm going to try to do this in about a minute. So basically throughout history, the last 2000 years specifically, this this wisdom was really safeguarded by males. So it's very male dominated uh, wisdom as of today. But now, as I've been working with more and more women and we've been getting more and more answers, it seems as though that there's a there's a clear differentiation. Um, I've had a lot of women tell me it works the same way as the men's cycle. I've also had a lot of women tell me otherwise. This is what I personally believe. I think women are much more intuitive and they're much more prone to energy than men are. I mean, that's a fact. Everybody knows it. Um, women are, are much more uh, psychic in those types of abilities. And personally, I think that there's a lot of evidence to show that the women um, have sacred secretion happening during their menstruation ovulation cycles. I think it's specifically during menstruation. I have not been able to piece that together yeah, fully I've yet. Heard, I've heard but, that, uh, that they can even stop uh, blood flow entirely by practicing the sacred secretion. Now, I I've also that, heard that. I can't, yeah, I can't. I have. I actually. Ha I have one. I have one girl, ironically, who is actually here healing with me. She's staying at my house, and she she is she falls into that category because she has been practicing this uh, as well, and she no longer menstruates. Um, but she's very healthy, and she she uh, does a phenomenal job with it. It's all about trying to get more data. Uh, I'm very open to listening to more females on this because I've heard all, uh, a lot of things but yeah i do believe that the majority of the wisdom was male dominated so it, it's going to take more time and experience and details and data for us to figure out the truth of that for sure and i'm gonna for sure have uh mr psychosmos on here again to uh you know just more expand on it we just wanted to go over a short a uh, little bit about the sacred secretion today and hopefully in the future we can cover you know all of your all's questions if you have any questions leave them in the comment section um if if you have any questions about us, the specific astrological timing, I can also send you to websites that I use personally to uh, read the stars and know when my moon is entering my sun sign. And go follow Christian Mystic too on TikTok and everything and on YouTube. Sure, He's great. That. Yeah. And, uh, and, and I'm Psychosmos again. Um, yeah, go follow and, Psychosmos. Yeah. Yeah. Lots of love to you guys. Many, many blessings. And uh, yeah, it was great, man. I, uh, I love this conversation. Uh, sure. Take care. And God have a great day. God bless. You all too, for sure. Yeah.